First off, I'm Pen USB Mike. I make game assets that I sell. Secondly, I've worked on games like Domekeeper, Shogun Showdown. And thirdly, I am releasing my first solo project called Bullet Bunny. It comes out March 4th. And fourth, we're gonna be tackling a bunch of must know or, or little tips and tricks to improve your A Sprite workflow. So let's let's get to it. We're gonna be uh, using this this uh, character that I sell, part of my dark series on itch.io. Check that out in the link. But we're gonna be using this guy and kind of going through all the, the little tips and tricks. So number one is replace color. And I used to do this one by one. Say if you want to change the wires and the the eyeball and maybe the, the weapon here, I would just, like old, two years, three years ago, I would just go through and <laughs> every frame I would, I would change to red, which isn't very efficient. So what you can do now is highlight every single um, wireframe, which you could just click on the wire layers if you have it up and you can put hold shift and press R and then you have this replace color thing that pops up. And what you're gonna wanna do is click on this red, this from color and slide it over the white and then click on two, the two color and slide it over to the red. And then you'll have all the frames of the wire red. And that took a whole 30 seconds instead of going through each frame. And you can do that with the head as well. Shift R, change the I, the red. And it's it's weird at first, you wanna click and hold it. And when you click the color, you hold it and drag it onto the first color you wanna change. And then the same with the second one, click and hold and drag it to the color you wanna change it to. But now the head and the wires, all red, and it's more of an evil character now. And you can go ahead and do that with the weapon as well. Shift R, click, hold that white, click, hold that red. Just like that, the whole character's changed. And if you're making characters in game or, or selling them like I do, you can do tons of variants and it just saves the purchaser or if you're making a game, just saves time if you want an evil version, a, a good version, etc. So that brings us to number two, select color range, which is a really good tip if you're if you're doing a pixel landscape or something you can go ahead and we're just gonna for this sake we're gonna flatten all this so it's on one layer say if you're doing a landscape and you want to just kind of add some shadows to color you can select all red we'll do we'll do all this red okay and what you can do is get a darker shade and do a bit darker and right now you have all of this selected so you can go ahead and start shading and then when you're done you can see over here in the preview you can see you don't have to worry about too much you can just you know color wherever and if you're doing a landscape and say you have a ton of water or grass and you select all that green grass you can select the darker green and, and shade it in without worrying about getting that color anywhere else so let's just undo there and get the, the frames back and we'll move on to the third Thing, which is link cells to duplicate. So instead of, let's just say you want to add a background here, you pick a color, this nice gray, and you want it all throughout the animation. Um, me, three or four years ago, I would have done this and maybe would have copied this. And then it, you start getting a little rhythm and it's going quite quick. And it's not that tedious, but it does take a bit. So instead, you can click on that first cell, drag all the way to the end, link cells, and you have your character with a background on every frame. And if you're doing that, say, with a head or something, or a weapon, say you have the weapon drawn on only the first frame, you can go ahead and do that, and then afterwards you can unlink all the frames, and you have the, the weapon, in this case the background, on every frame, but you can edit them individually since they're not linked and won't transfer to each frame. So that's one way, and that's just a quick way, instead of copy and pasting and taking a few minutes, you can do that in five, 10 seconds. So let's move on to the fourth one, which is using the V tool, move tool. If you hold V, you can see it brings up what frame you're on. Right now, say if you're on the background, it's gonna highlight the entire background. If you highlight the body, it's gonna highlight the body. If you have a weapon on, it's gonna highlight the weapon. And this is really cool to, first off, show you what frame you're on. And secondly, if you hold V and click on an alternate body part, say if you're on the weapon layer and you click on, you can see here it's, it's on the weapon, and you click on the body, it will jump to the body layer. So this is, I use, this is probably the most frequent one I use, jumping between layers. So if I'm working on the body, I want to quickly move it over here. It's also the move tool, which is the third powerful part of it. You click and hold, click V, and then click and hold, you can move 
move the entire body. And if you do the same thing and you're on this layer, it's just gonna jump and you can move all the body parts like so. And we'll just undo that. And it's and it's just a really quick and cool feature. I, it's probably the most used one and I highly recommend getting used to that and, and using it because you're saving a lot. The fifth little tip I have here is the Z index. And this is a fairly new addition to A Sprite. Before, you can see even with this character that I did probably six months ago, I have a VFX on the front, above everything, the front layer, then I have a back. And that's just to do VFX that are in front of the character and VFX that are behind. And you can see here, I eventually came in and edited the Z index. And what that, that does is give you a good example here. We'll do the back or the wire since it will be noticeable. If you right click cell properties, move to Z index and start moving it up and see there might not be anything behind it, but if we move it in front of the body, you can control that Z index. You can see now at zero, it's behind the body because it's below the body and the layers. But if we move it up one, oops, up one, it's gonna be above. And this is just a quick way to move layers above another layer without without making a new layer like I used to. And it just keeps things organized and you can see directly on the timeline. It has a little Z, so that one's been modified. And if you wanna click on it, you can see it's like, okay, it's two, it's actually two layers high. Now, or you could go two la negative two, two layers lower. And it's new and it's been, I used it in a video a couple months ago. I'm not sure if I explained it enough, but it's been it's been commented on quite a bit, so I thought I'd tackle it in this video as well. And that brings us to the next, the sixth little tip here, and we'll just move this wire back. And it's it's using your arrow keys to move through the frames. And that's that's not the tip itself. It's uh, using the arrow keys is cool. If if say you're working on the weapon and you're just quickly adding details, let's say we're adding some shading under the weapon and the weapon moves a lot and you're just using your arrow keys and say you're constantly going through the animation. This makes more sense when, say if you're doing a run animation and you wanna make sure it's getting right. And the arrow keys, if you're going left or right, once you're at the end of the run animation, it's gonna, it's gonna jump to the heel animation. So instead of using the arrow keys, you can use the greater than or less than symbols, which are the symbols between the M and question mark. And if you use those, they do the same thing. But once you hit the end there with the run, it jumps to the start. So if you're trying to smooth out a run animation or adding small details and you want to constantly see if it's smooth, it will just cycle through the run animation, left or right, instead of the arrow keys that jump to the next frame. So it's handy. This is one I, I learned within the last year and I use it quite a bit, especially for runs and attack animations that you're constantly trying to improve and, and make it smoother. This is just a quick way to cycle through the frames. And that brings us to the next little tip here, and that's the thumbnail size. So if you organize your layers fairly well, it still might be tricky, like you can look at the body wires, and it's easy, but a little trick you can do is hold control and use the mouse wheel and zoom up. And you can see if you do it once, you're getting a little bit of detail on the thumbnail. But now we can see, okay, we know this is the wire, this is cape, this looks like the feet, the head, and the weapon. And if the, there's not enough detail, you can zoom in even further. And you can say now, okay, this is the weapon for sure. This is the head, the body, wires, and MK. And it's just really nice if you're working on, say, the attack animation, and you're constantly swipping or swapping between layers. Whipping. <laughs> if you're constantly swapping between the layers, it's just cool to be like, okay, I wanna work on this frame, this one over here, this one. And you can just see in detail, okay, what is it doing? And then if you're done with it, you can just zoom back out. Another way to turn that on is click on these three sliders and you can click thumbnails and you can drag this to see the thumbnail size. You can also do the overlay size and that if you turn that on, it just makes a small overlay window and that's pretty small. But if you turn it to 10, you see it pretty good. So if you do two again, you see that preview real nicely. You can also change it to one and that overlay window will be there. So if you're just checking out the frames, super handy. So you can set it to the size you like, maybe fives, five, five or four looks pretty good. You can see that whole thing and you just see the little overlay window, which is a real nice touch. So that's kind of like the thumbnail, um, things that I don't see anyone use too often. And while we're here, we'll move on to the 
next next tip which is number eight and that's the onion skin which everyone's familiar with but a little trick you can do with it is turn it on here so you have onion skin on make sure you have your background and you can see in the attack animation you can see the two frames before and after and that's marked by these you can drag them out um every most people with a little bit of experience with a sprite they, they know this and use it a lot but they might not know that you can turn on a red and blue tint and it's really helpful because the red will be the frame before and the blue will be the frame after you can see in this frame you know the next frame is is the character swinging this weapon and the weapon ends up way over here and the frame before is kind of like a build up and you can see that that's the build up frame and then the next frame is is the big swing it's super helpful so you don't like mix up the frames because if you if you go on the original with no red and blue you can see both but you kind of you, you could mix it up and be like okay the the swing follow through is this one and this is the build up something like that i'm sure there's there's better examples of messing that up but just to get the idea that's the blue and red tin and to get on it three sliders again and click red and blue tin and make sure the onion skin is on which is this little button right here and that brings us to tip number nine which is modify selects and this might not be too useful for this character but we can still do an example right beside him so modify selects are really handy for ui and things like game like little icons like ammo or health bars or making things like different so if you select a 32 by 32 square and say you want to make it like smoother the edges smoother quick way is to go select modify expand you can expand by four or three and if you have circle brush on it's going to expand it and kind of make these smooth edges and then you can go ahead and fill it in and you have a smoother square box another way you can use this is to select modify border and kind of do the same thing if you want a square too too bigger it's going to make a square border like this and you can fill it in and then you can go ahead and draw the player's icon here so that's that's just a quick and handy way instead of drawing these borders yourself you can just quickly quickly make them for your ui and once you get used to it you'll you'll be fairly quick at it at first it might not feel as efficient but with time it will come so this brings us with the last last tip which is pretty common but say you're making a sprite and you want to export it for a game dev or for yourself a quick way to do that is just go sprite and trim and this character has a lot of vfx that aren't split up right now but you're gonna see this one here is taking up a lot of space so that's why the sprite's so big but say if you delete all this and you just have the idle and you go sprite trim it's gonna trim down your character to just use the space behind it and i i for one like to make my animations on a big i tend to make them on a big canvas and then trim them afterwards for some reason i just like doing that better so it's just a quick little tip for exporting instead of manually doing it and with that said that's i thank you for watching if you made it this far one last thing wishlist bullet buddy